one of the most iconic players of modern basketball. Many unforgettable moments by an unforgettable source. Allow me to introduce Dwayne Flash Wade. Before the NBA, he was never highly recruited by big universities. Being overlooked made him be on a mission. With his extreme quickness, fearless game, and a ton of talent, he was drafted the number 5th in one of the most legendary draft classes ever. As a rookie, his strategy was very simple. Attack the basket at all costs. He was going hard at it. With extreme explosiveness and very good dribbling, the kid from Chicago could get a bucket on command. In fact, he went so hard to the basket that he needed to use paddings to protect himself from hard fallings. He had a very decent rookie year that showed up a lot of promise, but was overshadowed by two rookies also very good at basketball, Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James. After his rookie season, Wade added a mid-range game, a floater, and a little jumper to start that helped him to become complete enough that with the help of a very well-run team, they were able to win it all. Still, the Mavs' scouting report was to leave Dwayne Wade open. Shooting was his weakness and they planned to exploit it and limit his strength. Attack the basket. The way he got in a rhythm was remarkable. He knew his strength was finishing close to the basket and that championship round, he proved to be one of the most creative and versatile players available at the moment. Let's take game one of the finals. First three baskets he made were literally layups. After he got himself comfortable, then he moved a little bit outside for the jumpers. The difference is that he was shooting those shots with already six points in his back and the confidence to do so since he was three and three from the field. That my friends is the way young players are supposed to get themselves into a rhythm. It does be noted that his defense was at the same level than his offense. Wade being a very strong dude could control his opponent and lead him to very uncomfortable spots. Plus, a great feel for the game allowed him to steal balls and to block shots like if it was nothing. His progress coming from a rookie to becoming a real threat was remarkable. He averaged the third highest scoring average by a player in his first finals appearance and he was also presented as the finals MVP, becoming the fifth youngest to ever receive it. Well, at least before Kawhi Leonard won it in 2014 against him and LeBron. Actually, D. Wade wasn't done breaking records during his first years. In 2009, he became the NBA scoring leader, capping off one of the most efficient and greatest seasons of all time. That year, he became the 11th player in the league history to average over 30 in the PER stat. In fact, the only reason why he did not win MVP that year was because LeBron James had an even better, more efficient season, who despite having less points per game had an even higher PER score, becoming the fourth greatest season by a player ever. Nevertheless, the 2009 Dwayne Wade version was probably the best we have ever seen. He averaged a career high in points, assists, and steals while also having an almost 50% of field goals made per game. If anybody wants to see Prime Wade, 2009 was the year. But something happened to Flash after a few years in the league. You see, Father Prime is undefeated. And for the number 3 of the hit, an injury that allowed him only play 30 games in a season took him down. His aggressiveness was the ability that he had perfected. He became so good at it that was able to win a championship thanks to it. The problem was that that type of game ages very poorly. Since our body is sensitive, especially athletes' bodies that are put to tremendous amount of stress for being able to perform, sometimes injuries are just part of the process. But for the weight, his knees were his kryptonite. All those aggressive takes to the basket, all the fearless contact layups, 
after a couple of years playing around 90 games per season, his body couldn't handle it anymore. That was when Wade's game started to change a little bit, and we saw the beginning of what a change in his tendencies would eventually be. Before the injury, he had no plan B, go to the basket at all costs. Now, more mature and aware that his body won't last forever, he started to show more progress with elbow jumpers, even more floaters, and hey, a three-pointer here and there. It was not like he stopped going to the hoop, not at all. It was still his best weapon, but he expanded his arsenal to a very complete game. In 2010, Wade's career would take a 180 degree turn. From being in a team without many options of winning a ring to acquire, during the summer, the best player in the world at the moment and one of the most versatile centers in the league. Everything in less than two months. That summer marked the beginning of a new era. The era of Miami's big three. Let's not kid ourselves. It may have been one of the most golden eras of basketball. The superiority of the Heat was so big that more than an NBA team, they seemed like the Globetrotters. Aliup over here, crazy dunks over there, and a lot of highlights that would give us forever. Despite being tremendously capable of winning the ring and proving they were one level above the rest of the league, the first year of that era is considered a disaster. Yes, they made it to the finals, but were defeated by some Mavericks who simply kicked them out of the court. What should have been James' first ring, Bosch first ring, and Flash second ring ended up being a worldwide humiliation. Analyzing that first year, it is very clear what was the problem that made them fail. With all due respect to the Novinsky's Mavericks and their well-deserved ring, but the Dallas folks did not win those series. The Heat lost them. It is no secret that LeBron James played very poorly in those finals. Averaging less than 18 points and nearly 20% of the possessions he played ended up in turnovers. The alleged Miami leader fell very short. In fact, if it wasn't for Wade, the series would have probably lasted 4 games. He led the team in scoring and literally attempted to lead his team to the second ring. But unfortunately, the big problem was that nobody knew who the team leader was. Was it LeBron or was it Wade? Because one was considered the best in the world and the other one was literally the face of the franchise since he entered the league. Well, until they did not decide so, until James didn't step up and proclaim he was the leader, they didn't start winning. That has such an impact on Wade's game because for the first time in his career he stopped being Batman and he became Robin. And gentlemen, let me tell you, what a luxury of a Robin. His minutes fell and his game had to adapt to the circumstances, but his contribution was never ceased to be essential in the Heat's next three years of dominance. After LeBron's departure to return to Cleveland to win his promised ring, the Heat were left in a time of depression. Four years of pure euphoria led to difficult times for Wade. Chris Bosch was diagnosed with a heart condition that disabled him for playing. Flash was noticing his age, and the franchise was generally gearing up for a head-to-toe rebuilding mode. The ship was sinking, and only Wade and his faithful squire, Haslam, remained there. Already with 13 seasons on his shoulders, the guy that was once feared by all was beginning to take a step back. The dunks became layups, the fearless takes into jumpers, and what was once an ultra-explosive player became a general on the court, controlling the tempo of the game and appearing at crucial moments, but without the characteristical, physical power of Flash. The last years of his career were spent from a team to team, signing with the Bulls, then to Cleveland, meeting with his friend LeBron again, until he decided to return back to Miami, where he would end up having his own last dance. A year in which the world of basketball had the opportunity to say goodbye to one of the best and most incredible players to see that have ever set foot on a basketball court. Wade's impact in the game was incalculable. With three rings, 12 all-star appearances, being part of historical events such as the ring Shaq won without Kobe, and the big three that dominated the NBA for four years, Wade's career is worthy of the Hall of Fame. 
Thanks for following the channel. Leave a like in the video. Let me know what you think about Wade's progress in his career. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.